Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor here. Really excited for today's show. Have a wonderful, sassy, bubbly, registered holistic nutritionist, culinary consultant, living network television show host of Peggy's Kitchen Cures and the author of the Kitchen Cures book and someone with just an awesome name, which I hope to God I pronounced correctly, <laughs> which is Peggy Kotsopoulos. Peggy, welcome to the show. Thank you. And you said my name perfectly. Woohoo! So I'm just going to call you Peggy and leave the last name off from this yeah, point no, forward. Uh, yeah, everyone usually goes by Peggy K because everyone butchers the last name, but you you said it perfectly. Oh, well, thank, well and I love it, too, because your website actually acknowledges this because your website is PeggyK.com. So. Yes, exactly. No one would come to my site if I made them spell my last name. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Peggy. Well, hey, thank you so much for joining us on the show. And one of the reasons I wanted to have you on was you have uh, quite an interesting story doing doing the corporate investment thing and then evolving into the more nutrition and wellness side of things. So can you tell us a bit about your professional evolution in this field? Yep. So I started off in investment banking. I spent seven years um, doing that. And while I was very good at it, my passion was always food and nutrition. So growing up, I grew up in a Greek family, obviously you can tell by my last name. And, uh, it was all about food and, and I was always taking my family's recipes and trying to make it healthier. And I just had an awareness from a very young age of how, what I ate made me feel. So while I was in investment banking, um, you know, they, we, we would have these breakfast meetings in the mornings and they would have bagels and danishes and, you know, muffins. And I'd come in with my own breakfast and everyone's like, what are you eating? What are you doing? But come three o'clock in the afternoon while everyone's doing their coffee runs and falling asleep, you know, behind their computers, I was always energized and, you know, I always felt great. And everyone's like, what are you eating? What are you doing? So one by one, people would come into um, my office asking for nutrition advice. And at the time I was not a nutritionist. It was just a passion of mine. It was something that I've been studying my whole life, but not professionally. Um, and so I started doing lunch and learn. So I said, you know what? Everyone was coming to my office. I said, I can't even do my day job. I'm like, I'm going to go to the <laughs> boardroom. Yeah. I said, you know, I spent most of my time giving you recipes and all this kind of stuff. So I said, you know what? I'm going to book the boardroom for anyone who wants to know what I'm eating or what I'm doing. Come to the boardroom at noon at, you know, on Friday at noon, and I will do a lunch and learn, and I will do a food demonstration. So I'd show them how to make healthy snacks at work and what to eat for breakfast and all these kind of things just to boost their energy. So this one lunch and learn for my department turned into a corporate wide wellness program. So I would have people signing up. We would fill up classes every other Friday. And I would do these lunch and learns. So keep in mind, I was an investment banker during the day. And it was just like one part of my day. Um, every other Friday, I would do these lunch and learns. And that's what I loved to do. That was, you know, it just, that's what I was excited about going to work for. And I was actually going to take another job at another investment firm. And before I, I left my current job, I had all this vacation that I had taken because they work you to the board, bone in, you know, corporate wellness. I mean, in corporate, in, in a corporation in general. So um, I took my vacation. I went down to California and I did a culinary arts course in whole food nutrition just for fun. So I went down for four weeks and before I started this new job and I loved it. I felt like I was in my element and I was doing, I thought, I can't imagine doing anything else. Uh, for a living than this. And I didn't even think about doing it for a living. I always thought it was too late. I could never change. I could never go back. But what I realized at that point is it's never too late. So I said, you know what? I'm going to give myself a year. And if it doesn't work out, I can always go back into investments. So I came back from this trip and I, I, I left my current job and I turned down the job that I was supposed to take. And I said to them, if I take this job, I'll be very successful, but I'd rather be significant. I want to know that what I'm doing is making a difference in other people's lives. Because if I can feel this way by eating certain foods, everyone can feel this way. And I just felt like I had this mission that I wanted to share. And so I had no idea what I was going to do. All of a sudden, I left my job. And, and there was this course that kept coming up. There was this trip. It was called, I remember, it was a healthy adventure trip. And I literally thought I was going to be like rock climbing and kayaking and swimming with dolphins and stuff. Meanwhile, I go down to, it was in West Palm Beach. I get there and I realize it's a health conference. So they had experts from all over the world um, talking on the area of health and wellness and nutrition. And I met this man. I remember I was in, in the shuttle from Miami airport going to the Keys and he was probably in his mid sixties. And I'm like, oh, so, you know, what brings you to the strip? Little did I know what it was really about. And he's like, well, he goes a year ago, he was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer. He went through chemo and radiation and all this you know, types of stuff. And the doctor said, there is nothing we can do to heal you. What, what you have to do is go home, get your house in order. He, 
and you're basically going to die. Like, there's nothing we can do at this point. And this man at that time said, you know, forget this. I'm going to try to heal it myself. And by changing his diet and lifestyle and everything, like his mindset, a year later when I met him in that shuttle, his cancer was almost gone. Mm. And so then I get to this conference and I meet 250 other people who had reversed, you know, cancer, diabetes. Could you, one guy was supposed to go for quadruple bypass surgery and um, he ended up clearing his arteries through diet and lifestyle. And I thought, you know, at the end of this, I said, you know, I need to make this message mainstream. What do I need to do? So I went back to school and I did my culinary, uh, sorry, I did my um, health educator certification in West Palm Beach, Florida. So I ended up staying. I thought I was going to go there for a week. I ended up staying for six months. <laughs> and um, so I ended up doing my, tr my training and then I went back to school and became a nutritionist. So it was a total life transformation and it's scary, but it was, it's the most rewarding and most fulfilling thing ever. And I love every se se single second of what I do. Oh, well, Peggy, that's a, just an awesome story. And certainly the, the, the passion for making a difference and, and helping individuals on a much deeper health related, emotional related level is certainly something I can empathize with. And I want to dig in a little bit because I love I love that you come from the corporate world, especially from investment banking, because mm -hmm. I, I, I want to get your opinion on certainly in investment banking and in other corporate and professional cultures. We're dealing with such intelligent people. These are people that are clearly have very high IQs, but but somehow this 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 knowledge of just drinking five hour energies, drinking cappuccinos, eating danishes and muffins and running yeah. yourself into the ground. Like that's not a very smart thing to do. So, so why is there, why is there this disconnect between professional wisdom and health wisdom? I think what it comes down to for most people is, um, education and time. So when you're working 12 hours a day and you have a million things going on in your life, you, you just want the quick fix. You're not thinking long term. You want an immediate solution. So that's why people are running for coffee. People are, you know, doing the quick, quick breakfast on the go. They're running through, you know, drive throughs or, you know, the coffee shops, grabbing coffee, grabbing a, a muffin because it gives them their, you know, I had breakfast. You know, the first thing is like, you know, eat, everyone hears that they have to eat breakfast. Then they're like, well, I ate breakfast. I had a muffin. I'm good. You know, <laughs> a muffin is a cake in a cup, right? <laughs> it's breakfast and, cake, as I like to call it. <laughs> yeah, it's cake in a, in a little muffin cup. You know, if it makes you feel better calling it a muffin, it's good for you. <laughs> it is exact, it's a cake. And so um, so I think it's, 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 it's the two things. But what I realized when I was doing it is if you're eating, you can you have the choice to eat healthy or unhealthy. And because it takes the same amount of time. It doesn't take more time to eat healthy. There's so many things on the marketplace now that you can do. Like you can do a smoothie in, in the morning for breakfast. All you do is throw all this good stuff into a blender, take it to go. That's going to give mm -hmm. you way more energy, way more fiber throughout the day. And you're not going to have those midday crashes where you're constantly going to have to keep fueling yourself with caffeine and sugar and caffeine and sugar. So it's just making, just by making that one change in the morning, people feel better. And they're like, you know what? I don't need my coffee in the afternoon. So it's just starting by making one change. It's not overhauling your diet completely. It's not, um, and it doesn't take too much work. It's just, it's trying to find it, how it fits into your lifestyle. Peggy, I think you hit the nail on the head there because so often people see nutrition as this <clears throat> either or, either you are yep. eating just garbage or yep. it's it's this pure, no exceptions. You're either at a zero or a 100%. But what you mentioned there, people might might have heard and say, well, she's saying it takes as much time to eat healthfully as it does eat un unhealthily. Well, that's not true because, you know, I have to make all this food and yada, yada, yada. Well, maybe that, that person is creating a false dichotomy in their brain where there is eating, for example, maybe the way we did 50 years ago, which, which certainly was not uh, people being certainly – uh, focused on every calorie they took in and all this and that and the other thing, but they were eating food rather than processed garbage. And if we just make that move to food, that doesn't take that much more time, if any, and it doesn't cost that much more. And the results are dramatic, are they not? It's true. It's true. It's just it's just a small thing. It's like, for example, instead of having, you know, a high sugar granola bar or, you know, something from the vending machine as a snack, I mean, have an apple. Like it takes, you know, it's, it's portable. You can take mm -hmm. it with a little, you know, a little container of raw almonds you can have as a snack, even meals. Like you can get healthy meals and healthy foods anywhere. Like when you, I, I, I travel a lot. So people are like, well, how do you eat healthy on the road? It's actually really easy because there's always healthy choices on a menu. Mm -hmm. 
And even if you don't see exactly what you want on the menu, if you see foods that you like on the menu, you can create it and put it together. And that's the key. And Peggy, that I think that's the key distinction is oftentimes it's that it's that idea of of healthy versus perfect. And that that is a key distinction, right? Like if you go to McDonald's, they're 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 you probably can't find too much perfect food yep. there, but you can certainly do things that won't kill you. Exactly. Exactly. And it's it, exactly. And it's not all in all or nothing thing. And, and that's what I see to clients that come see me and, and using that McDonald's example, if they're eating McDonald's seven days a week, I can't tell them to stop eating McDonald's seven days a week. I'll be like, why don't you try going there three days a week? And instead of ordering this, you can order this instead. Mm-hmm. Or instead of having fries with your burger, try having a salad with it. Or, you know, I don't know what's really on the menu these days, but, uh, but you know, it's just making those healthier changes wherever you are. So you can do it. It's really and, simple. And it's really a matter also, Peggy, I think of acknowledging, and you can tell that you work with clients on a day-to-day basis and because you have this very practical message because a lot of people, I'm sure you and I, you know, we like to geek out on nutrition. We think it's yeah. fun. It's like a little yeah. science experiment for us, but especially for individuals who are really busy with their family or really busy with their job, they, are, this is so secondary to them, right? They're just like, I want to focus on other things, not to focus on this. So if you force me to focus on it, I'm just going to turn the other direction. So how do we, how do we give people the tools they need to be healthier without turning them off because it seems like another full-time job. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I think everyone has different needs too. And I don't think there's a diet that fits everyone or they don't have to give up their favorite things. I mean, I I told you about this book that I have coming out um, pretty soon. So the end of the month, the end of August. And what the way I wrote the book is it's very approachable. And it's so the way I did it was every chapter is on a certain element. So one is on energy, one is on stress. One is on beauty. One is on muffin tops. One is on, you know, if you gain weight in your butt and thigh area, like your thought I like to call it. Um, it could be skin. It could be digestive issues. So basically, if you have, if you're, if you're lacking energy, so if we stay with the energy chapter, if you go to that chapter, it tells you why you're lacking energy. So it gives you that education in a very short, easy to understand way. And then it tells you, okay, here are the key nutrients that you need to be energized. And here are the top five foods that have it. So it's very, you can actually just make small changes like that. So you don't have to change your entire diet. You don't have to change your entire lifestyle because once you start changing just a few small things, you're going to notice a difference. And once you notice that difference, you're never going to want to go back to the way you were before. So it's just going to happen naturally. I never have to, if, you know, if I want, if somebody's at point A and I want to get them at point, you know, C, I don't tell them about point C. I'm like, try B first, Mm -hmm. you know? And it's just because once they try B, they're going to want to get to point C. So I don't even have to do any work at all. And everyone is different. Everyone will find what works for them and what does not work for them. Peggy, I think that's a very profound distinction. And often I'm sure you hear this as well, where people say either with eating healthfully or exercising, people say, well, how do you have time to do that? And once once you're on the once you transition from the dark side, let's call it, I often find the most accurate response to that question is, I don't have time not to do it, meaning so I, I also know what it's like to work in the corporate world and to to try to do anything with dedicated mental effort for 12 hours a day requires optimum health to, to truly do it at yeah. your best. So once you experience this healthier version of yourself to to take, even if it does take a little bit more time, let's say hypothetically, even if it took an additional half hour, the, the 11 and a half hours you can work now at 100% will accrue you more success than working 12 hours at 60%. Yep. Yep. And you know what I used to do when I was working? um, I mean, I still do the same. I'm a morning person, but before work, like, right, I would just get up. You can get up an hour earlier, go straight to the gym, like out of bed, go straight to the gym. Don't even think about it. And or go for a run. And then you get ready and you go straight to work. And the amount of energy you're going to have is amazing. Even a half hour workout during your lunch break, even going outside for a brisk walk, the energize, the energy you're going to get from that, you're going to want to do it all the time. You're going to feel so good that it is going to become a habit, whether you like it or not. It's just starting for a lot of people. And also the, those simple steps. I think that is so, I, I often draw the, the analogy to in the last uh, American presidential election, there was this talk of the 1% versus the 99%. And I, I sometimes fear that in the area of health, that is starting to happen, meaning that there's this 1% that like really, really wants to get dialed in with their health. And they're all about just at like organic local, which is all awesome. Like that's mm-hmm. awesome. And if you're into that, that's great. 
but it, but then you have the 99%, which the the 1% sort of loses, <laughs> becomes yeah. so disconnected from the 99% that they're telling you, do this, do this, do Z. You're at A, do yeah. Z. Yeah. And it's just like, I can't. But if you get me to B, and then uh, I can get to C. I was talking with a gentleman by the name of Ray Heinish, who's a brilliant uh, a host of, I think, the number one rated uh, health show on iTunes. And he was talking about, if you want to learn to floss, here's what you should do tonight. Floss one tooth. Yeah. Floss one tooth for a week. And then pretty soon you'll start flossing two teeth and it won't even seem like an issue. Right. (laughs) But that's exactly it. That's exactly it. Because I mean, you're going to lose people along the way. Right. You have to. I always realize you have to meet people where they're at. So it's about making, you know, like I said, the McDonald's analogy, if you're going seven days a week, try going three or four. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, instead of fries, three burger, have a salad or something like that. Or instead of the pop, have a water like just that, you know, instead of a soda, have a water. So something that simple. And, um, but going back to stress, like going back to, you know, work stress and, and all that kind of stuff. I think that is one of the biggest factors when it comes to health. Um, because when I was in investments, I was stressed to the gills and yes, exercise helped. And I ate so clean that I was like, you know, that 1%, you know, I think I've lacked <laughs> since then a little bit, but I was so strict on my diet and I ate so clean. And I, I worked out all the time. And because it was my, you know, it was kind of like my gateway was my out um, from, you know, that, that intensity. And, um, but what happened, what I realized was I was not healthy and I didn't understand this when I, I, um, so when I was down, when I quit my job and I went to school, back to school to become a nutritionist, I had a blood cell test done and they basically, it's a spectra cell test and they look at every single vitamin, um, mineral, you know, antioxidant level in your blood. And my antioxidant levels were at 27%, a hundred percent is perfect. 60% is when they have maybe a little bit of concern. Um, But, you know, the average is about 70. I was at 27. I didn't understand. I, you know, they called me at the office and they said, we're really concerned about your health. And I'm like, I don't get it. I'm the healthiest person I know. I eat so clean. I work out all the time, but my body was so stressed that I was not absorbing any nutrients. Mm. So I think it's a whole, it doesn't eat, like food is just one aspect of it. And exercise is just one aspect of it. There's a whole lifestyle that we have to think about first and it's making time for yourself and really, you know, relaxing and managing that stress. Well, and it sounds like it's also an about a a clarity of goals, because in addition to focusing on things outside of just eating and exercise, uh, oftentimes when we get back to this either or both and uh, diametrically opposed health versus not health perspective, which is inaccurate, there, much of the health information, I'm curious to get your, your sense of this, is directed, for example, if you want to have six-pack abs, one, that is not synonymous with health, yeah, and two, sure. a lot of people don't actually want that or need that. If they had to choose between having six-pack abs and having a great relationship with their friends and family and professional success, they'd mm-hmm. probably take the latter. So, so again, how do we, what is the difference between pursuing health and a broader sense of wellness in your lifestyle and pursuing looking like that professional fitness model you see on the infomercial ad? Yeah. So I would take the first one and studies even show like just going to that example. Um, there's a study showed that, um, hanging out with your girlfriend. So as a girl, hanging out with your girlfriends is better for your heart and your health and reduces stress more than exercise, like significantly mm-hmm. more than exercise. So it's about having that that whole lifestyle. So it's not about, because you know what? Those six-pack abs, I mean, I've had them at one point and that's when I was very unhealthy because I was exercising way too much and I was eating not enough. I was not eating the right food and I wasn't having that balance and I was stressed out. So it's about really, I think optimal health is balance. It's not six pack abs. If you get them, great. You, you know what I mean? Like, good for you. Um, but I think the first, the priority should be um, well being, really. Absolutely. And I think that's a, it's a great maybe analogy where, where what we're talking about here with a six pack abs is maybe analogous to being able to shoot 10 free throws in a row perfectly or doing some other very specific skill where it's like if it's a hobby or if you like to knit very very well like that's that you can do that but you don't knit to improve your health and you don't necessarily uh be uh, go box to improve your health because it it, it might you might be active but it may also cause some neurological damage and if you want to work to have six-pack abs that might be all right but some of the things you do for health are not synonymous to what you would do for that hobby exactly exactly a hundred percent well, Peggy, uh, tell me a little bit about how we can, in, in the corporate world, one thing I've noticed just from my own personal experience in the corporate world is uh, a little bit of 
uh, discrimination might be a, a, a incorrect word, but certainly when you come into the meeting or you come in for the day and there's the, the, the muffin tray and you don't say anything, but you, you partake in something other than the muffins, mm-hmm. sometimes you get a little funny look. What do you do about that? <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah, I used to get funny looks all the time. And that's and but you know what? I just I used to give them I used to laugh back at them because you know they'd be like, What are you eating? Ew, what is that? That's gross. And I'm like, uh-huh. And you know, this is why I feel amazing and this is why you're you you don't. <laughs> <laughs> and so over time they're all like, I wanna do what she's doing. And that's how the corporate wellness program started. So, you know, that happens. People are gonna look at you and say, Ew, what is that green drink you're drinking? Or what is, you know, what's in your oatmeal? Like, and but then you know what? Three weeks later. People start coming to you saying, okay, I want to do what you're doing. What do you do? I secretly <laughs> want to know. They're, they're just, they're just, you know, it's just a lack of education um, and it's an ignorance. So you just keep doing what you're doing and, you know, just like, you know, joke about it and say, you know what, you're going to want to know what I'm eating in a, in a few weeks because you're going to feel amazing. Or, and you know what I used to do is I used to bring in little snacks. So for breakfast, instead of their little muffins, I make these amazing like quinoa cookies or um, you know, apple oat muffins, but they're like real muffins or not. There's nothing cakey about them at all. I use like whole grains and, and, but it's, you know, again, baby steps. So I would bring them in. I'd be like, Hey, try this. And they're like, Oh, they're actually not that bad. I'm like, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> so healthy doesn't mean it's gross. Um, and healthy shouldn't be different. It's just, you know, you have to do what's right for you exactly. and people start to jump on board. Well, and healthy also seems like it's, it's, it's healthy. That is not sustainable or healthy. That is polarizing or that uh, turns people off is also not healthy. So people may uh, listening to the podcast may have just heard, you know, I use these quinoa oat muffins and whole grains. And certainly there's a lot of legitimate concern about anti-nutrients and grains and genetic engineering and yada, 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 which is absolutely true. But to be clear, if I have to choose between eating a glazed donut and eating a muffin whose base ingredient is quinoa and apples, I think we can all agree that the muffin with the base of quinoa and apples is a step in the right direction. Exactly. Exactly. And and personally too, like I, I hardly eat grains. And, but if I'm doing, you know, it's, it's kind of like a gateway for people totally. to get off white refined sugar and white refined flours. So if you can do, you know, baby steps, uh, and that's the thing, that's the whole thing from going from A to, you know, A to Z is, you know, you have to meet them where they're at. And so if I can make things for them that they're used to eating, but that's better for them, I'm going to choose that. Absolutely. And I think that is, I have also in my experience, Peggy, seen that evolution a bit where you you transition from just a just 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 garbage just the traditional edible product diet to more of a eating the way people ate 50 years ago prior to the obesity and diabetes epidemics which is still potentially eating a cake but it's like a cake you made at home versus a cake with all this hydrogenated nonsense that you would never put in it but when you buy it off the shelf in a hostess wrapper it's going to have in it and then as people start to feel better one they often they're not depressed a lot of us live in a state of pseudo depression because of yeah. our, our our lifestyle they're not depressed they have more energy and when you're not depressed and you have more energy you start to just have a more positive outlook on life and you start to want to you're like, well, this is awesome. I want to celebrate it. I want to do more. I want to create a virtuous cycle. And then you do start to transition to what people would quote unquote call healthy, but it takes that basically go from, go to normal. And I'm going to define normal as eating food and food is defined as things you find in nature. So go to normal first and then go to healthy. What do you think about that? Yeah, totally. totally. And that's the thing. It's just, it's not even about, yes, it's it's not a different lifestyle. It's not, it's, it's just real food. It's just real food that's found in nature, period. And certainly there's all kinds of ways to refine that, but let's not, let's ensure we don't turn off the 99% of the population who's not currently enjoying the the real foods found in nature because we're uh, infighting about what the best foods to find directly in nature are. Yeah, it's true. (laughs) Because totally, I mean, if you, if you want to become a professional athlete, then you've got to, you know customize your training to that level of precision. But if your goal isn't to be a professional athlete, if it's just to be able to go uh, throw the ball with your kids in the backyard, you're not going to have to be as hardcore as someone yeah. who has more ambitious goals, right? Exactly, exactly. And what one person's, you, we, and I think as a society, a lot of people fall short because they compare themselves to what people, you know, the extreme that 1%. Mm. And that's not always attainable. It's just making a small change in your own life. And I think everyone's goal really is just to improve energy. Like, I think that's a big thing is to reduce stress and improve energy. Just feel better. Just have more vitality. Exactly. Go, you know, throw a ball with your child or go play with your grandchildren or, you know, just have that energy and vitality to 
to live a full life. I think that's what everyone is striving for. And just by eliminating crap found in, you know, fake foods and just adding more real stuff into your diet, just making those small changes, you know, like again, like instead of that granola bar, grab, grab that apple, that is a huge step. And Peggy, one thing that I wanted to uh, wrap up on, because I think it was an awesome point you made earlier, and that was how laughing with your girlfriends or laughing with your friends can do more for your stress and health than than training for a marathon or whatever. You know, and that's sometimes people say, well, what is the right balance or how do I find that right balance? And I'm curious what you think about the following, Peggy. And that's really the reason we're doing any of this. You mentioned it's to have more energy. And I, I think something similar, it's to be happy and to feel good and to be able to live the life we want to live. So the question of when, when have I found my balance is, are your efforts furthering or, or not furthering your global macro life goals. And like, if you're spending so much time exercising, you're spending so much time preparing food that you're not able to spend time with your family and what really matters to you is spending time with your family, then you haven't found that balance yet. Exactly. And it's different for everyone. You cannot look anywhere except within to find that, right? Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's, it's, you can only look within to find that. And, and it is, you know, taking that moment and asking yourself, what is important to me? What do I want? What do I want? Exactly. What do I need? What does it take for me to be happy? And I think that is is the ultimate goal. Really. And, un and understand that we can't and we get this in other areas of life so that we can't have everything. For example, if you say that my goal in life, what is most important to me is becoming the CEO of the investment banking firm that I work at. I tell you what, that CEO probably doesn't have much else going on in his life nope. or her nope. life, right? So. And you know, but even simple things, like I just read this, there was a study recently and those who, um, those who prepare dinner will work out less and those who work out won't prepare dinner to eat healthy. So, you know what I mean? There is compromise, you know, there's only so much time that we can do in a day and we have to realize that we are human and sometimes we can't do everything. There's little things that we can do. We can carve out, you know, we, we the most important thing is carving out time for yourself and doing what you love, and hopefully it's active, and hopefully it's health, healthy, um, but again, ultimately, you know, to make you feel your best. And not to geek out too much, but Peggy, I'm sure you'll be familiar with this because being in investment banking, you must have a, a bit of a background in economics, but for, for those who do want to geek out, it's really the concept of marginal cost versus marginal benefit, right? Like if you want to, if you're already doing whatever, 99 units of energy for your health, applying that one more unit to get you to 100 is probably not going to help you be as happy as applying one more unit to maybe the relationships in your life. Exactly. Exactly. Like hug somebody that like, there's nothing better than hugs. You know, that, <laughs> that's so good for your health. And, you know, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's choosing those, it's prioritizing. I love it. Hugs, hugs are great for your health and it has nothing to do with the number of calories you burn. No. Hugs someone. <laughs> I know. And you know what? They're calorie free. <laughs> gluten, -free, gluten free hugs there you go gluten free meat free hug awesome. peggy well folks uh, hopefully you've enjoyed our talk with peggy as much as i have obviously a very uh, a very well balanced and intelligent and passionate woman whose new book the kitchen cure it's just called kitchen cures right yeah kitchen cures yeah. kitchen cures coming out here shortly so please do check that out please check her website out at peggy k and that's with two g's so p-e-g-g yk.com. And again, her name is Peggy Kotsopoulos. Did I get it right? Yeah, I just got it right again. I'm so proud. Super, <laughs> I'm so impressed. <laughs> Peggy, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Listeners, I hope you enjoyed today's show as much as I have. And remember, this week and every week after, eat smarter, exercise smarter, and live better. Talk with you soon.